Over the weekend, the 20th anniversary of Take Back the Night March and Rally to protest violence against women and children took place. It began at the YWCA with a rally. Speakers took to the podium, starting with AIDS Saskatoon representative Erin Stribben, who reminded women to unite next year for the World March of Women. Nellie Kandu Nachalobi spoke about female genital mutilation, which is commonly practiced in parts of Africa, Indonesia, and East Asia. Women's right activist Sandra Mitchell reminded all who attended why they needed to take to the streets. One common voice tonight to reclaim our right to live in our homes without violence and to move about freely in our communities without fear of being injured. Mitchell feels strongly when women or children are hurt. The world should stop and take action. About, uh, advances in uh, technology which enable us to have worldwide instantaneous communication and explore space even beyond our world and still at this time women are not safe in their own homes nor are they safe to walk about freely in their communities. So we're here to oppose violence against women and to uh, voice uh, our discontent with respect to that but we're also here to celebrate, to walk hand in hand with pride in our voices, determination in our step and conviction uh, in our uh, united and common cause that uh, we won't rest until there is an end to violence against women and children. Federal NDP leader Alexa McDonough traveled from Halifax to attend a women's convention in Calgary, then to Saskatoon to lend support, speak and participate in Saskatoon's Take Back the Night rally in March. Tamara's House board member Flo Lavallee spoke about the need for an operation such as Tamara's House that provides counseling and healing to adult survivors of cult, sexual, physical and mental abuse. Basically feel that there's a resolve, that they're being heard. There's several politicians in the, in the walking with us to uh, assist us in making us heard and hopefully it'll be heard in the higher places. Lavallee also announced Tamara's House has received funds from Frank Remy to purchase land and build a facility that will expand their services. At present, they are a drop-in center with the new $250,000 home. They will offer a live-in facility and healing lodge to mention a few of the new services. The new Tamara's House will be the first of its kind in Canada. For Plugged In, I'm Lorianne Christensen.